Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one and all to the Cunters. That's right, the Cunters. The collective unilateral narcissistic trophy achievement scholarship. My name is Ben Aldrin and I am joined by my co-host Alex Ward. How are you, Ward? I'm alive just about. How are you, Mr. Aldrin? Also alive just about. So what yeah. is... So what is the Cunters, I hear you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked, because the Cunters is the premier video game awards ceremony of the millennium. But unlike conventional awards ceremonies, we celebrate all things platinum trophies and achievements. Alex and I have picked five award nomination categories and have each picked one game for them. So without further ado, Cue the special awards ceremony intro. We're at the Cunters. Well, we're not actually at the Cunters. The Cunters has come to us because we are still, well, kind of in lockdown, but still social distancing. So we're still over the microphone and we are back for another on the spot cast. As you can tell, this week is a special episode all about platinum trophies and achievements. And Alex and I have created our very own little award ceremony, which we'll be getting into very shortly. Um, and yeah, how are you today, Ward? Yes. I'm glad that this heat wave is ending soon. Is it? When's it ending? Um, so the late half of this week we're having like thunderstorms and that, good. and it's supposed to sort of start to get cooler from then on. It's always in. good when you see the thunderstorms because you know that's the cold and the hot air clashing, which means the cold's on the way. Good. It's always yeah. good. I, I, for one, am already sweating my bollocks out because I had to turn off my fan to record this podcast. And so far, my fan's been running 24-7, aimed at me, and now it's turned off and I'm already dying. So, this is good. <laughs> the chocolate that I have can in the room get, can, is melted. Can we, can we get an F in the comments for Ben, please? I know. I've been having much ice. I've I brought myself one of them, a cool little ice cube tray off Amazon that I've been refilling daily to have in all my drinks. Uh. I've been doing my best to keep cool in this hot climate. Bloody global warming nonsense. So, without further ado, anyway, we're going to get into it. So, as I said before in that rather over-the-top intro, we've each picked five uh, nomination categories um, all about trophies. That could be anything from just the most difficult trophy all the way to the one that we think is just the easiest one. Alex and I have five categories each. we picked five games as to be the winners. And we're going to take it in turns to do those. I can hear stuff going on in the background in your house. 
What's going on? Do you on? mind I'm recording? <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. I know. You just can't get the staff for the award ceremony these days. Don't worry, we'll make sure Alex's family <laughs> oh, is duly fired after this award ceremony. Yeah. For, uh, for that interference. Um, so, yes, let's cue a bit more overacting again and let's get into our categories, shall we, Ward? Okay, then. Seems like Alex has decided to leave me. Fantastic. Oh. Oh, is he back? We'll be back. We that was be. a really unclimactic. I went, are you ready, Ward? And then there was just silence for about five seconds. <laughs> I was like, okay, he's gone. And I looked over at my phone and it says, connection is poor. I'm like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so anyway, yes. Are you ready, Ward, to start announcing in dramatic style our categories? Affirmative. I think what we should do is we should take it in turns just to say the name of each category and then we'll go through the games, okay? Yep. So, so my first category is an interesting one and it is the most difficult platinum. Mmm. What about Sounds yours? Tasty. My first is the most fun platinum or every game to get every, that you got every achievement on. Exactly. Obviously, it's worth because pointing out that Microsoft, yes. Like, can you yeah. do a platinum? We'll, we'll call them. Any... We'll call the max achievements if you want. Or we know what you mean anyway, at least. So yeah. my second category is the most time-consuming platinum, the one that took bloody forever, and you didn't know when it was ever going to end. My second category is kind of similar to that one, but not quite. The most grindy platinum slash max achievement because. There is a difference between one that just takes a lot of time and one that takes a lot of time but was really, 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 really just like, Repetitive God, things. I can't wait till I've got mm. the platinum and this will be over. Absolutely. My third category is the platinum trophy that I am most proud of. The one that perhaps might not be the most rare one, but is definitely the one that I feel is my best achievement so far. Or well, not achievement, trophy even, I should say. My third category is the most BS. Like, say, you looked at the list and thought, this might be easy to get, and then you're like, oh, God, this is hell. Exactly, the most bullshit category. And my fourth and penultimate category is the tra platinum that I'm most ashamed of. The one that I feel is, though, although in my collection as a trophy hunter, is perhaps does not stand amongst the rest as being a worthwhile platinum. My fourth and penultimate category is the most easy slash pedestrian platinum or max achievements. Hmm, interesting. And my final platinum category is the one we wish we could reset and start again. This one is all about when you finish that platinum and you just feel this sense of disappointment and you wish you could just hit a reset button and start it all over again. And my fifth and final category is another really interesting one. It's the platinum or max achievements that you most want to get, but know that you never, ever will. Interesting. So that is our categories. Those are our categories, I should say. So before we get into that, yeah. let's have a quick word from our sponsors. Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> what? There's, this, there's this one player. There's this one player who keeps kicking my ass. Is it the Legend Twenty Seven? Yes, the Legend Twenty Seven. If you get that reference, you are a boss. Isn't that that bloody cartoon thing that comes on YouTube the entire time on the adverts? I know Race Shadow Legends is like the most cliched like sponsor mm. thing ever. That was yeah, I think that I was, I'm not sure what sponsor I was going to put in there. To be honest, I was just gonna, <laughs> I was just gonna add something. I don't know. Maybe I'll add something. Who knows? So. It is time then for the awards. I will begin if that is okay with you, Mr. Ward. It is, Mr. Aldridge. And I'm going to start. Um, well, actually, I'm not going to do these in order. I am going to leave the one that I wish I could reset and start again till last. 
But the other four I'm not going to do in any particular order. I'm just going to do the ones that I like the sound of first. And I'm going to start off with the one that was the most time-consuming award. So my nomination and the winner of the most time-consuming trophy nomination is... Skyrim Special Edition, which is the PS4 remaster, well, kind of, of Skyrim. <laughs> kind of. It is kind of. It's more of an upscale, really. But it's, it is kind of, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, you know. It's not a full remake, anyway, at least. Um, so, yeah, Skyrim Special Edition. Now, um, if you didn't know what Skyrim is, it's a sort of fantasy, open world, multi not multiplayer, RPG game made by Bethesda, who also make Fallout 4 and the Fallout franchise. Um, and if you've played Fallout 4, then you're probably going to have a rough idea of what Skyrim is like. Um, and the reason I've picked this is because the game is, well, massive. And the trophy list is full of many, many time-consuming trophies. Now, when I say it's time-consuming, I don't mean that it's bad by any means, because all the trophies are really fun to do, and they're enjoyable time-consuming trophies, which makes uh, what makes it different to, I think, your grindy category award, if you understand what I mean. Mm. So, yeah, Skyrim Special Edition is full of so many trophies. There's trophies for going huge down massive storylines, collectibles... I mean, you can easily get lost in that for a few months before you've got to there, but you will enjoy every single second of it. And I have enjoyed and did enjoy getting every single second of it when I got it way back when. I mean, it was a long time ago. I think I got that. I think it got it. I don't even know when it was. It must have been last year, I think. Last year, perhaps. I'm looking at it. Skyrim Special Edition. It was my 33rd Platinum, and I'm now on 57, so it's uh, quite a while ago. Um, but yeah, that is my first category. Skyrim Special Edition is the winner of the most time-consuming Platinum. Yours, Ward. Okay, Mr. Aldridge. My most grindy Platinum slash Max Achievement goes to... Assassin's Creed, Assassin's Creed 1. Oh. <laughs> because the bloody flags. Oh, yes, actually. It, yeah, you, and the thing is, unlike the feathers in Assassin's Creed 2, the flags in Brotherhood, like all the animus, like data shards and like the, um, like the shanties, all this stuff, unlike all of that, you don't get any reward in-game for getting the flags in Assassin's Creed 1. In fact... Patrice Desolé, who was the creative director and the creator of it was the creative director of Assassin's Creed One and Two, and briefly on Brotherhood before Ubisoft basically booed him off so they could milk the franchise, um, and also the creator of Assassin's Creed in general. Like all the whole thing is due to him. He, he, he has admitted he only put the flags in game as kind of like trolling people, like schmucks like us who play games for 100% completion. Mm. Yeah. So there, uh, is, there an one. is there an achievement for it though? Yes, thank God. That yeah. Is, yeah, but you get them, but there's not anything like you get unlocking game. That's the thing. Well, I suppose, so, and the thing is, there's so many of them. There's like over 450 of them or I, something. I suppose that you know, in terms of the feathers there in Assassin's Creed Two, you don't really get a great deal for that either. What do you get? The Audi Tory cape, and yeah. you get a slight tiny conversation with Maria. Yeah, oh. but at least you do get something oh, to I be suppose. like, look, I went and did it all. Whereas the Assassin's Creed 1's flags, you get absolutely nothing. You get literally <laughs> nothing in game. And if you're on the PS3, because I don't think the PS3 version even has trophies, so you wouldn't even get trophies for them. Well, I wouldn't know about that because I never bothered to play any more than the story uh, was, and that put me to sleep as it was anyway. Um, so anyway, let's move on. So the second category I'm deciding to today is the most difficult platinum. Like I said before, this is the one that I found most challenging. Now, as a general rule, I don't really play a lot of very difficult platinums, or I don't particularly struggle a lot with platinums, to be honest. Um, I'm one of those kind of players that... I'm not sure if Alex and I share this in common, or not. I think we differ on this. 
Um, I'm one of those players who enjoys playing things through on quite hard difficulties as a challenge. I think Alex doesn't. Um, I think Alex prefers things on. I have done some things on like that, higher yeah. difficulties and that, but overall, no. I like the I like the challenge of it. So generally, for me. Mm difficulty in trophies is something that i enjoy so it was hard to pick something for this so i picked the one that i thought was most frustrating and i can happily announce that the winner for the most difficult trophy of the millennium apparently is doing mile high club on veteran in modern warfare remastered dun, dun, dun. so modern warfare remastered which is the amazing very well done remaster of the original Modern Warfare. It's more like a remake, let's be honest. Well, I it's guess it like is. A full remake, it, is, it? it is a remake, but it does say remaster on the title, so yeah. it kind of throws you off. Who knows what it is. But it is an amazing uh, remake, remaster, and like all Call of Duty games, you have varying uh, difficulty settings. You normally have rookie, regular, hardened, veteran, and in some of them, realistic. Um, now, there's often trophies for completing all of these different um, difficulties, and often they stack with one another. So if you're going to do Veteran first, you'd also simultaneously unlock all the trophies for doing it on Hardened, Recruit, and Regular, or whatever as well. Um, so Modern Warfare Remastered, I did it through on Veteran. It wasn't particularly easy on Veteran. There are some parts, and... The one that secondly stands out to me, separate from Mile High Club, is the one where you escape after supposedly assassinating Zakaev and you have to hold your own while you wait for extraction underneath the Ferris wheel. Yeah. That, A lot of people have said that's that definitely one of the on hardest Veteran was extremely difficult and I was so relieved when I found it. I think it took a lot of attempts. But Mile High Club is a step up from that. Now, if you don't know what Mile High Club is, it's basically an epilogue. Um, at the end of Modern Warfare's story, um, it doesn't really have anything to do with the main story, but it's just kind of like a mission where you're, you're SAS, um, you're breaching onto a plane. Um, I think you're trying to save someone, a president or someone. You're trying to save someone, aren't you? Um, and yeah. basically, it's full of Russians. You go through it, you kill the Russians, and you do that. But the trick is that there's obviously quite a confined space. Um lots of enemies and there is a timer to do it as well you think you get maybe like i don't know it's not very long i think it's like 30 or 40 seconds you get um, it's not that long at, you don't get that much time at all on veteran no but you have to get the, absolutely mm. on. and not only is it just difficult because you're on veteran it's a tight space and because enemies can kill you pretty much within one or two shots it's also difficult because mm. when they start to throw you into the anti-gravity sections, when the plane starts banking down and up, obviously you start floating in the air, flying around the whole cockpit and everywhere, and it becomes exceedingly difficult. And with the timed element, it is very, very frustrating. But it is, like anything else, one that I have done and one I do have. Um, so yeah, that is my second. Woo. What is yours? Uh, my most bullshit... Kind of slash max achievement is Call of Duty 2. Okay. Now, Call of Duty 2, you can get every single achievement in a single playthrough. There are no collectibles, no like cool like Easter egg stuff or like unique like one off achievements that you can get in a mission like there might be in like some other ones like you have to snipe this one person in this specific yeah. area or you have to do this and this and this. There's none of that. So it's only completing each like chapter of like the campaign you know just that's basically how you get them all you could get every team in one playthrough but it has to be veteran if you play on any other difficulty even hardened you can only get one i think either one or two achievements and there's only hmm. like 13 or 14 in total okay and that is yeah that is just like it's just so such a bullshit like just and they didn't even try. They could have done some stuff, especially <laughs> since there were like a bunch of like, like there's a whole like section when you're in a tank. Like they could have done something like go through like the whole tank section without being hit. Or there are many sections where you're like hiding from tanks and stuff. They could have done some really cool creative stuff. So is, like is, they did in COD 4, the COD 4 remaster or the Modern Warfare 2 remaster. There's some really like cool achievements slash trophies they do. But no, they just... It's, it's just a terrible achievement. It's just such bullshit. 
I, and I got it. It took me like several years because I gave up halfway through and then went back to it. But still, so yeah, that's the most bullshit platinum slash max achievements in is, my opinion. Is the uh, is the veteran particularly difficult in the game, or is uh, you know the compared to others? No, the fact that there's no sprint makes it a lot harder than it oh, probably yeah. would have been otherwise because we didn't have sprint till COD four. COD two didn't have, even though it's Infinity War. COD two didn't have sprint. Well, that's because they didn't know how to run. And that's basically a lot of going prone, crawling, yeah. and smoke grenades. That's basically all these crawling and smoke grenades. Yes, I can imagine. There's a lot of peeking out annoying. for like a second, and like as soon as you get hit, within like immediately going prone again. Sounds <laughs> absolutely lovely. So uh, yeah. <laughs> let's move on to the. It's still not World at War, man. No, thank God. Well. The only reason I haven't done World at Wars Pat now, I think, is because it obviously contains uh, the zombies trophies, doesn't it? Yeah. And I'm just not. I haven't as... got. I haven't got Max Achievements for World at War. I was just saying. You were saying look very. I haven't got any. Like, I haven't actually got any any Call of Duty game that featured zombies trophies. I do not own the platinum for because I'm just not particularly as good yeah. as zombies as I am as doing the rest. Um, mm. Just not my area. And I'm not a big fan of that sort of thing. Zombie things either, to be honest. Um, so yeah. There you go. In my opinion, the last good zombies was Exo Zombies, and you had to buy that separate. Yes, well, a lot of me. I didn't like Black Ops 3 well, Zombies, Exo no Warfare Zombies, World War You and I spent zombies, quite a lot of time playing that, didn't we? Yeah. I remember. We got some good videos down there. Yes, <laughs> yes, that you can't see because they don't exist anymore. So, moving on hmm. to. Uh, is it our third category, I believe, now? And yeah. I'm going to okay. go for. Well, actually, there's two left. I have most proud of and the most ashamed of. So let's start with the bad and start with the most ashamed of. This is the category that highlights the trophy that I am most ashamed of. Now, if you're a trophy hunter, you are expected to gain a lot of trophies. Okay? And that could be from games that you enjoy doing. But also, there's a competitive aspect to the trophy hunting and a kind of narcissistic, I want to be better than everyone else aspect as well. Um, and unfortunately, that means that often you play games that are subpar. Um, and I couldn't think of any more of a subpar game than having to click a jar of mayo 14,000 times. And that is My Name is Mayo, which is actually on this channel. You can go and watch Isabel and I tap a jar of mayo 14,000 times. And we will earn a platinum trophy for it. Um, so if you don't know what the game is, it is exactly what I said it is. There's a jar of mayo on a screen. You play as a hand and you tap it. You tap it until it opens. And there are various trophies for tapping it in different outfits. A lot of which seem to be bikinis of some kind. Um, so it's a very, it's a very sexualized jar of mayo. Um, so yeah, the reason we did it is because Isabel was over here last Christmas. Um, and we went through a bit of a just a what is the most random amount of platinum as we can get in a day? And I think I did about six of the most random ones within a day. There's a few others on there, but none of the most of the uh, all of the other ones at least have some gameplay element to them, even if it is rubbish. This one is just chapping mayo, and this game was made solely for an easy platinum. You know, you can easily. Yeah. I think it's got it's got a lot of trophies. My name is Mayo as well. It's not a. Uh, it's not like a... You might think it's... Oh, Ben is bet it's got like five trophies or something. It's not... Probably hasn't got that very many. But you'd be wrong to think that because it's actually got quite a lot of trophies. So the trophy value in playing the game is, well, extremely high because um, there are actually 51 trophies in My Name is Mayo. That, com that comprises one platinum, four golds, and 46 bronze trophies. No silvers. Um, and, yeah, there's a lot of trophies. So there's a lot of value for your money there. If you can do it in an hour, you can get yourself 51 extra trophies on a platinum. So, uh, yeah. That's it is, pretty nice, Eddie. It is something... I don't want to say I'm ashamed of it as such, but I guess out of all the ones that I have, it's definitely probably at the bottom of it. But if you are a trophy hunter and you do take it seriously, these are the kind of games you're going to have to do. Because otherwise, if you don't do them, everyone else will do them anyway and you'll be left out either way. So, yeah. Your third one? My third category, the most fun, in my opinion, black slash max achievement goes to Assassin's Creed the XCO collection. Well, that's a, that's a cheaty category choice, that one. That's free games. <laughs> <laughs> eh, it's 
Not can't agree. Well, Shut up. Because no. um, Ezio, this, as we said before, Ezio's story is just so good. And just playing it all, having it all, on, you know, just playing through it one after the other in one chunk is just so fun. Especially with lineage at the beginning and Ember's right at the end. It's just so fun, and right. the games themselves are just so good. We don't like, consider even Ember's. Even like, uh... like, the games that came after, I still can understand why everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of ones like that is the pinnacle of Assassin's Creed. Because that was when the series was that it knew exactly what it wanted to be and what it was. And it just, you know, it just did its own thing and it didn't give a toss about, you know, anyone just bitching and moaning about any of it, really. It just did its own thing and it was awesome. Well, I mean, yes, I would I would agree with that sentiment. However, I will say, on this channel, we don't talk about Assassin's Creed Embers. We don't pretend that don't exist. Uh, it just ended happily ever after and it says... Shag into hey, Ezio's still had a happy ending. He's still had a happy ending, didn't he? When you say happy ending, do you mean the nice ending or the other kind of happy ending? Because oh, he just had a happy ending. He, he had a fat. He and you know, it's not like fucking Altair who died on his own. You know, in a room locked somewhere. It's not like you know Edward Kenway who got killed by um burglars in his house. It's not like mm. Bayek, who ended his, you know, who spent the end of his days alone. I'm assuming it was alone. I mean, fucking I Aya know. buggered off to Rome and all that. It's not like Cassandra, who lived for over two and a half thousand years. Yeah. Well, under, under two and a half thousand years. But, uh, <laughs> it's like two, it was like two and a half thousand years. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> four, well, four hundred and... 31 BC, isn't it? So it's about 2,400. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, Ezio had a nice happy ending. He did. So and throughout the series, he had many other happy endings as well. So moving on to, uh, well, it is our penultimate category. And it is, of course, the one that I am most proud of. Now, it was difficult for me to pick one because there was a lot of trophies that I earned that not a lot of other people have earned. And I judged this on rarity. I went on to online and I looked at the rarest trophies that I owned. Um, I don't know if Xbox does a similar thing, but on PlayStation, you can see the percentage of other players that have earned it. Um, and I judged yeah, it on... Yeah, you can do that on Xbox too. I basically judged this nomination on two things one how rare is it and how difficult was it and i've come up with the most difficult rarest trophy that there is and that is a snooker 19 dlc trophy not a platinum this one but although the platinum is included and it is called three star master now this is a dlc trophy that came with the only dlc pack for snooker 19 now snooker 19 is a snooker game um one of the first that we've had in many years. I've spent many time playing it and it almost did very much get nominated for both the most difficult platinum and for the most time consuming platinum because it was a difficult platinum to do solely for the fact that it took me quite a few months to do it of solid playing repetitive games, doing all the online stuff. It took a long time to achieve, but I did enjoy doing it, which is why I didn't put it on that list. However, the trophy Free Star Master, or Free Star Master, yeah, is a DLC trophy. Now, after DLC, Snooker 19 added in a challenge mode. Um, like any other game challenge mode, it features a series of different challenges, um, quite a few actually. I think there's something like 150 odd challenges. Um, and they're based all around Snooker, all different things across the table, potting, positional, everything that you might imagine uh, challenges to be set on. Now, for these challenges, you needed to get, for this trophy, three stars on each of the challenges. And the stars you got out of five were determined on the aiming skill uh, level that you used. So I used a slightly higher than medium one, because um, it's the one I'm used to using online, which gives me three stars out of five. But there was one level in it. There was one particular level that was the most infuriating challenge. I could not figure out the way to do what they wanted to. I would explain it to you, but I know Alex isn't a big snooker person, so he probably won't understand. Um, and no one anyone else. But, um, yeah, there's one on there that I'm actually going to put into a... Uh, 
Grumble Sundays at some point whenever I decide to kick that story that series back off. Um, and yeah, it was just the most difficult one. It took me months to do, and I just spent ages trying and trying. And in the end, I did it so many times that I got it purely out of luck. Um, and I was so utterly more pleased for getting that trophy, and I was that much more happy than I have been for any other trophy that I've got. I have never celebrated so much because I tried hundreds and hundreds of times that one shot to get it right, and I finally managed to do it. So yeah, that is my fourth winner. Oh, that's so oh, hot man. in here. It is. It is so hot uh, everywhere. Oh, carry on then. <laughs> and I hate it. <laughs> okay. My mo my penultimate category, the most pedestrian slash easiest... Actually, I'll stick to most pedestrian. Most pedestrian platinum slash max achievement goes to Far Cry 3. Hmm. Less, I will say less so for the list itself, because the list itself, it's not difficult at all. Um, it's reasonably, you know, it's reasonably varied, but because they basically copy the exact same, like, list for Far Cry 4, Far Cry Primal, Far Cry 5, and Far Cry New Dawn. Pretty much every Far Cry game after Far Cry 3 has pretty much took the Far Cry 3 achievement slash trophy list, well, maybe tweaked one or two of them, changed the story once, it's, and then just it's funny. copy and pasted it. It's funny you should say that, because as you know, I am currently playing my way through them, and I have the Far Cry 4 yeah. trophy list in front of me here on a piece of paper. Now, I'm going to pick up the yeah. trophies that I see that is normally there. One... There's one for tagging a number of enemies with the camera. There's one for yeah. distracting enemies with rocks. There's one for killing yeah. someone from over 60 or 70 meters with an arrow or a bolt. Uh, yeah. There's takedown trophies. There are running people over. There's several mission ones. And there's uh, lost letters, spinning Marnie wheels, or that could be easily replaced with the memory cards. And yeah, I understand what you mean. And one for the, getting all the uh, yeah. skills as well. Um, but yeah, because yeah. every, every <laughs> it's always like certain ones throughout the story and completing the story. Um, like you said, the arrow one, the rock one, the tagging one, getting a few of each collectible type, doing a certain amount of the towers. You know, it's just so. But, I, don't, I actually kind of hope Far Cry Six actually mixes up the achievements. But in a sense, in a sense, even Assassin's Creed doesn't repeat the achievements as much. In a sense, it's kind of, and I understand your point. It is kind of nice to have every now and then a game where it is relatively quite simple. Because I was doing Far Cry Three Classic Edition, which has a yeah. few less trophies than the original one, minus the online. Yeah, because I haven't got the. It took out the co-op, but other yeah. than that, I don't. I think there's one, it's one or two that they took out. And I'm so glad. And I'm so glad that I only had to collect sixty relics instead of 120 because I was losing my mind yeah. at that point. I was getting so bored of going around the map trying to collect everything, which we will talk about more later in this podcast when we go on to the more normal things. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you on that. The trophy list are all very similar, although I do think Far Cry 5 was a little bit more different than the others. Um, mm. It did share some other stuff, but it did have quite a few differences as well. Mm. Um, yeah. So, the final nomination on today. Well, We've for both me, left anyway. our most interesting categories to yes, last. Yes, we have. And my one is the one we wish we could reset and start again. Now, there are many games. I can guess what this is. I well, can kind of, I might be able to, I but think don't, I can guess what this but is. But don't guess, quiet. but don't guess, because there are many, 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 many games that I wish I could have done this again, and I'm going to name some honorary mentions, or I should at least say, perhaps, I'll do it like this, I'm going to name all the nominees, okay? So, okay. the first nominee I had for this was The Ghost of Tsushima, which is a game that only mm. released very recently, but is... A game that I really, really enjoyed and blitzed through the Platinum in a few days. I'm very much hoping that they're going to add a new game plus mode and a new game plus trophy, which will give me an excuse to actually Mm. play it, because there's nothing left for me to do. And my other one is Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, I wish I could re-Platinum that again for the first time, because that was a great Platinum once again, and a really enjoyable one. But, the winner of my trophy award is none other than what happens to be one of the best games I've ever played 
Alex knows exactly what's coming, and so do you all. And it is The Witcher 3! I'm going to be Terminator Salvation. Terminator Salvation. No, I could. I wish I could reset that for the for the just the sheer amount of platinums. I could just get ruined like a couple of hours. I could have like twenty in a day of just gold trophies. But yes, it is The Witcher Three: The Wild Hunt. I think Alex knew this was coming. Yeah, I know. Believe me, I could have included The Witcher Three on here for originally before I called you. I actually had The Witcher Three on here three times, but I narrowed it down. I had it also. <laughs> I had it for the. I had it for the most time-consuming and for the most proud of. <laughs> but um, yeah. So The Witcher Three: The Wild Hunt has to be one of the best games I've ever played, the most amazing, and it is also one of the ones that I've talked about in Old Morning Mondays videos. Is one of the ones that I was, when I did eventually platinum it, I really did feel that sense of disappointment and longing in me. Um that you get when you finish a game that you love because there is nothing else you can do in it except start it again. Um, I played through it, I did all the different quests, all the collectibles, all the different difficulties, New Game Plus, I I did everything. I rinsed the game for months and months and I'm very, very disappointed it's over. But I'm hoping that when the PS5 comes out they will release it again, either with a bit of a scale up or a remaster or whatever so I can experience it all over again. And yes, that is my final winner for today. A very, 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 very predictable uh, pick. <laughs> well, it's yours then, Ward. Okay, so my plat like platinum slash max achievement I most want to get, but never, ever will is Halo the Master Chief Collection. Ooh. I have said before on the po I've said before on the podcast, that is probably my most favourite achievement list in any game ever, because they've done it for like all the little Easter eggs and hidden things and that in the game and all the speedrunning stuff and the scoring and all that stuff. You know, they've all done achievements for it and it's just really cool because all these little things I've heard about that I've now got incentives to actually go and find and do and that. And there's just so much content on the disc and it's so it's all so good and there's so much of it. It's all varied and the achievement list is also fun and varied and all this. But there are uh, uh, okay, part uh, I'm not I'm not even gonna include the multiplayer exclusive ones because I think long time listeners know that that's an obstacle for me with Max Achievement. Yes, we all know it's, that. <laughs> It, and it's not even going for on the hardest difficulty, Legendary, because I've done every single Halo, apart from the Halo Wars games, but they're strategy games and I'm crap and I don't play many strategy ones. Oh, boring still, strategy different. games. Crap but, um, game. I've done every single Halo game, at least one, at least one version, because for Halo 1 and 2, I haven't done this for the originals, but I have for the remasters. Um, gone from on the second hardest difficulty, and I'm actually... I'm not amazing, but I did think I was, you know, I did pretty well. Halo 3, ODST Reach, and Halo 4, and Halo 5. I honestly didn't think were too bad on the second hardest difficulty, which is surprising, especially given Halo 2 on its high difficulties is one of the hardest FPS games ever made. Um, but yeah, even going from the hardest difficulty, I wouldn't mind going through because I love Halo and I'm honestly pretty good at Halo. I know those campaigns so well and all the tricks that you can do to get past them hard points and that, you know, it's um, legendary, well, it's lasso, which is legendary, all skulls on. I've said before, there are things you find called skulls, which can, like, make the thing harder or easier, like, make enemies dodge grenades more. They throw grenades further. You have to melee attack to get your shield slash health to recharge. Um, gives enemies twice as much health, upgrades enemies, makes enemies invisible, makes get, your entire heads up get, display get to disappear. The point. <laughs> and Lasso is the hardest difficulty with all of those active. And there are not only achievements for doing that, but there are achievements for doing each game like that in under three hours. Oh. Do you know how long it would take the average player to go through the game's like normally on Lasso, let alone in under three hours. And there is one skull called the Iron Skull, where if you die, you have to restart the mission from the very beginning. So, 
and legendary can be like on Halo 2 there's an enemy type that can insta kill you in like less than half a second because they're so accurate and again they, they insta kill you because they can because their guns take you out in one shot and they're sniper enemies so you could be just going around and then suddenly boom you're just dead from some guy at the other end of the area you're in can, can you like uh, I can you have no I idea can. how impossible no lasso would be like Lasso on its own would be without even going for the achievements for doing each game lasso in under three hours. All right, well that's you your... have no idea. <laughs> All right, well, I think so. We're... Yeah, that. Yeah. So yeah, I really would like to get. I really would like to get that because it's just such a big like max achievement thing. It'd be just such something to be really proud of. But I know that it's just totally beyond my capabilities as a player. Well, <laughs> thank you for that, Alex, and thank you all for tuning in. To yeah. the Cunters, our premiere. Maybe, maybe next podcast or in a future podcast, we might do our picks for the other person's categories. That's it, possibly, possibly. Put down, in the, but put down will, in the comments if you would like that. Or put down in the comments also your uh, awards, your games oh, yeah. of choice for these categories that we've listed today. We'd be very interested. Yeah to hear those but otherwise that's it for this year's Cunters and we'll see you next year for Cunters 2021 I've been your host wait are you doing James Bond now <laughs> I was doing like a little sort of outro ending to the thingy but yeah it sort of somehow almost ended up being the James Bond thing right. I don't even well, understand how <laughs> That's it for the Cunters, and let's get on with the rest of the podcast. Yes. Oh, well, that was that was uh, tiring, Alex, do you think? God, my ass is clammy. So I'm no so idea. hot now. As we, uh, <laughs> like, mate, you're just, in the, when it's like this, you just sit there. And you sweat. You don't even have to do anything to sweat. You just I, I, sweat. I have you low, listeners, that right now my nips are out and I'm not wearing a shirt. I took it off about halfway through Alex's Halo speech because I was getting hot just <laughs> listening. Um, I'm, wearing, I'm wearing a vest, some loose shorts, pants, and that's it. Literally, I'm going to do this now, listeners, and I'm sorry for this. I'm turning my fan back on now. Hopefully it doesn't make too much noise because it is on the floor over there. But I cannot carry on with this podcast without it. I'm going to die. So my nuts, yep. my nuts are like, I don't know, like two walnuts yep. drowning in a sea of sweat. We're like roast chickens in the oven. We're literally stewing in our own juices. Mm, yes. Yeah. Yes. So welcome back anyway. Speaking of that, I had KFC for dinner. It was very nice. Yes. Anyway. Was it, did it remind you of your nuts when you were having it? I will say, if my nuts are as tasty as KFC is, oh, I'm going to be hit with the ladies maybe in the future. Hmm. Not if it was as greasy, anyway. though. You're not going to go... Uh, Ale- they're not going to go, have you tried Alex's knob? Finger licking good. Are they? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You could dress up. You, you could dress you. up as Colonel Sanders, couldn't you? Have like a little moustache. I'd probably get cancelled by. <laughs> I'd probably get cancelled by someone on Twitter for that. Because these days, you, you do anything, you'll get cancelled. Probably. So yes. Anyway, let's carry on with the yeah. podcast. Now, there's not a great deal to talk about, but we will address the elephant in the room. And I'm not on about my belly. That's just been revealed in front of the microphone. I'm on about. Mm. Uh, where have we been? Well, where have we been? Where have we been, Alex? Um, I've been just sort of here melting. Yeah, well, I've been doing been? that as well. Well, you might be wondering where the podcasts have been recently. We were doing them weekly, although we did have to take a little bit of a weekly break. Um, the reason for that being um, we were actually having our bathroom uh, remodeled and refitted in our house, um, which... You know, on the surface, isn't too much disruption, but my room is next door to the bathroom, so there was a lot of noise, a lot of people going in and out of the bathroom, so it wasn't obviously just wasn't a viable option to be able to record the podcast last week or any other videos you, for that matter. If you stuck a power, if you put a power drill to the wall at the foot of Ben's bed and went straight through, and the drill bit was long enough, 
it would peek out of like the wall at the back of the like shower bath combo that Ben has in his bathroom. Show how just literally like Ben's well, yes, literally yeah. My, next door. Literally, there's a wall here. You might be able to hear me knocking on it. Okay, I'm pretty sure you heard that. That wall is in front of the yeah. microphone, and on the other side of that wall is the uh, is the bath. So uh, yeah, it was it's pretty close proximity, which is good if I want to use it, obviously. Um, but for when there was lots of demolishing going on in there, it wasn't particularly good for YouTube videos in general. Um, so that's where we've been. So we had a little bit of a hiatus, uh, but we're back. We're back now. I'm working three days a week. Alex is. Well, Alex does whatever Alex does. I don't know what he does. <laughs> Um, you don't want to know. But we've both been spending our time sweating our asses off this week, and me especially. Um, I had a shower this morning when I woke up just because I felt disgusting after I'd slept and I'd stuck to the bed sheets. Do you ever have no. that when you're on the no. bed sheets that you're laying on, and then when you want to move, the bed sheet seems to go with you? Um, I think that only really happens if you sleep topless, and I don't. I do. I couldn't sleep. With I would. I don't sleep with clothes on at any. I don't for that very. I don't sleep topless for that very reason. I don't sleep. I don't want to stick to my sheets. Fair enough. I don't sleep with clothes on at any time of the year, including winter. Um, and I definitely not Jeez. would not be able to sleep with clothes on at this bloody temperature. You know, it was thirty-two here the other night. Mm. Too bloody hot. <laughs> Too yeah, yeah. bloody hot. I know. Man was not meant to put up with this sort of weather. No. No, unless you're from a country that has normally, you know, hot weather. In which case, yeah, it's like probably Tunisia. right. Does Tunisia have quite hot weather? I think so, yeah. You think? Well, it's North Africa. North Africa is pretty hot, isn't it? So. Well, I suppose it is. I've never been, so I can't particularly say. Me neither. No. Yeah. So... Let's talk about platinum then. Speaking of, speaking of speaking of Tunisia, hello, Shania. God, I thought we'd escape Carry from on. this. Well, as her king senpai, I um, and um, Ben, um, no. I'm afraid um, I have so I have something to tell you. Um, oh, yeah, your um, your senpai status for her, um, she's kind of it's been revoked. Um, basically, your lack of punctuality when it comes to uploading podcasts means that you are no longer her senpai. Now, I don't know if she will give it back to you if you actually become punctual with uploading podcasts. It might be worth a try, but as of this moment, um, yeah, you're, you're no longer her senpai. Um, I, I'm sorry. Oh. oh. Well, I will have this uh, young Tunisian know that I did actually ask Alex to record a podcast for me before we had the bathroom begin but Alex was and I quote too busy to record a podcast with me otherwise no, there busy. would have been a podcast last week so my hang on hang on hang on hang on no uh, no it's not the recording that's the problem with them <laughs> it's the uploading them like the last podcast was like two weeks old well, that's because we went through a stage of uh, recording a bit too close to one another, wasn't it? But we don't have that problem now. Now we've had a break, had a little hiatus, and we're back uh, on time. There, this video will not be the next one going up. I am planning on uploading a different video before this one, so um, this will be the next. Mm. This there'll be another video before this one. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah. well, you know, yeah. I mean. I may not be her senpai, but I still reign as overall senpai king, so, you know. No, you don't, I do. No, Oscar. no, I do. Silence. No, I do. I do. She has God. I have it in. I have it in writing that I am number one senpai. Don't make me call my raven Steve to pluck your eyes out from your skull. Steve? That's a callback to the Ubisoft oh, forward. Oh, God. Is that what is that a noise that a raven makes? I think so. I think I was actually quite <laughs> accurate for one. I thought it was like a crow. <laughs> to me. They're all birds. They're not blackbirds. What what not all birds sound the same, you racist. <laughs> I'm not believe, racist. I can't believe you'd even say something like that. Oh well, if I'm not the Senpai King anymore, three of you, then well, yeah, fuck her. Um not really. <laughs> I'm not really that bothered. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> she's, she's, kind of, she's like an, an, one of our number one listeners, Ben. 
Well, yeah, but now she's abandoned me, so now I feel kind of upset by that. Aww. Now, now, my, now my feelings are hurt, and as Senpai King, I can I can see this only resulting in bloodshed of the Northern Kingdoms. You're not her. Not, you're not King Senpai. I'll have I to am. push. I'll have to push into the Northern Kingdoms she, with my army. She only write down in the comments how I am the King uh, Senpai. These are my comments. I can ban people from them. I control it. I am King okay. Senpai. Right now, right now, <laughs> Right, show you. Write down the comment, then take a photo of it on your phone, send it to me. Then if Ben removes the comment, I have evidence that he has removed it, that he is manipulating the comment section, so that it portrays him in a better light. But how are you going to show this apparent photo to the masses? I have my ways. I know where you live, and I'll be sending my uh, I know my, you... my personal senpai elite guard round to deal with you. I know where you live. I can do. I can do the yes. same because I am the senpai king. I live up. I, said many times, but <laughs> I if, am number one senpai. But, but if you're a king, how come I live on the higher ground than you, and you live down there squandering down below? Hmm. Uh, my house is bigger. My garden is bigger. I have a swimming pool. Well, my cock is bigger. <laughs> Although <laughs> I haven't compared it to yours, so we can't see. Let us know if you, you want us to do that. In the you look down, you look down, and you just see belly. I can see. It, I can see. No I can see it right now because I'm not wearing any clothes. Well, that's just really perverted and disgusting. I know. Isn't I bet that your room smells nasty. That's fine. I've got some Febreze here. See that you can you can hear the Febreze. I'll bring it over here. Here goes. Hear a little spray. You hear that? No, that I didn't. Is. Okay. Well. Unfortunately, that was me for breezing my bollocks. So, yes, <laughs> that is it then. I think for today's podcast, uh, I think we've gone on long enough. Thank you all for listening to the special awards episode. Hang on, you were saying that you were going to say about you were playing Far Cry Three Classic Edition. Oh wait, yeah, I forgot about that part. <laughs> we were talking about my bollocks. Yes, we were going to talk. We were going to, yeah, that's a good point. Um, Yes, so anyway, I'll carry on then. Ignore that part. I was just teasing you all. Ignore. Come back, viewers. I was just I was just testing you. That was all. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk about Platinum. It's because normally we have the Plat Chat. And we talk about the most recent Platinums I've got. But there's been quite a few since we last did a podcast. Um, I'm not entirely sure where we finished off. But I believe, I think last time... I was doing, or had just finished, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Which I think a lot of people have been playing that. Um, which I think is the last time it was on the... Tw well, it was quite a while ago I got the platinum for it, but um, I think it was the last time we were talking about it. And since then... Actually, mm -hmm. no, it wasn't. I was on GTA San Andreas, wasn't I? That was the one. Yes, ah. GTA San Andreas, that makes more sense. The 12th of July was the last time I did that, so about a month ago, which is the last time we generally did a new recording. So, yeah, that was the Platinum I was doing last time. So I got the Platinum for that, and then I moved on to the Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I got that a couple of weeks ago. Then I decided to go on Far Cry 5, which I did, with help from my darling fiancé, with the help for the online trophies. Thank you, darling. Um, and then I went on to Destroy All Humans, which was the remake of the original PS2 cult classic. And I got the Platinum for that as well. Then I went on to Far Cry 3 Classic Edition, um, got the Platinum for that. And now I'm on Far Cry 4, and I'm not far away from getting the Platinum for that either. I've got all the online trophies, which is good, because I was worried about those. Just finished a story not long ago before I called Alex, so now I'm clearing up, and I'll soon have another platinum. And what happens next? I don't really know because there isn't much out at the moment, so we'll just have to find something. What have you been doing, Ward? A lot of injustice too. I primarily. thought you might say that. <laughs> I was gonna like do, do some stuff on Odyssey this week, but honestly, with the heat, I just could not be asked to play anything for too long. So I've just been dicking about on YouTube, but. But, yeah, before that, I I did, like, a three-week-long binge on Injustice 2 because I'm addicted to that game's levelling and so, the customization. So have you... Have and I'm you... not... I've, I am not a fighting game person at all. 
but I played over four and a half, according to my Xbox stats, I played over four and a half days of Injust worth of Injustice 2. You ain't got much I, I don't know me. what I played for the first one, but I know it's nowhere near that. No. <sighs> well, sounds interesting. So, I mean, have you not got yeah. a, have you not got a fan in your room or a fan you can use? We have no fans whatsoever. You need to get a hold of the one. window open. You, that's not going to work, though. So you need you need to get a hold of a fan or something. Order mm. one offline or something. Get one off Amazon. You just you know you it's it think it's necessary at this time of year. But the heat might come back again, mm. even though the heat wave is almost over. Um, I'm expecting it to I come think, back. I think when the thunder, I think when the thunderstorms are coming towards the end of this week could go, I've uh, come and gone. I think that's that is. They've said the last heat wave of this year, thankfully. I'm sure it'll be this bloody hot on Christmas Day now as global warming. Mm. Probably will be. And that'd be just our luck. We don't get snow, but we get like en seemingly endless heat waves. Yes. Yes. And coronavirus. Yeah. On the plus side, the Snyder Cut is coming. So, you know. It is, yeah. Whenever, whenever it's coming. I don't know when it's coming. You probably do. Next year, sometime. Next year, sometime then. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's it then for this podcast, I believe. We haven't got anything else to talk about. So <laughs> otherwise, we're just going to ramble on and talk about Evie's arse or Alex is going to and how he worships it or something. Um, and how Tunisia has a wang. Don't you so. have to say that. Huh? I mean, what? <laughs> I don't you have to say that. It's, it doesn't really work. It doesn't really work when you whisper over the Bluetooth speaker because it just sounds a bit weird. But one thing I think we have learnt in today's podcast is that there are some truly very games out there and something I've always kept in my mind is that Tunisia does have a great wang. Something for us all to remember during these dark times. Thank you for listening. We've enjoyed your company. Hopefully you've enjoyed us. Thank you all for listening. And as your senpai king, I bid you farewell. As the real senpai king, I also bid thee farewell. Hmm, I sent civil war coming. <laughs> the podcast mm. could be. Mm.